All right, welcome back everyone. Today I have a really a bonus video for you because it's a video that I wasn't planning on making, certainly in my game development uh, journey, because this is a tutorial on how to set up a development environment for creating basic programs for the ZX Spectrum Next computer. And as you probably know, I am planning to make games using Z80 assembly language instead of basic. But I do have a video coming up where I will be using basic. So I needed to learn a few things. And uh, along the way, I actually ended up creating an entire development environment. So I thought that might be something that would be interesting for some of you who are developing basic programs for the ZX Spectrum Next computer. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably already creating basic programs on your ZX Spectrum Next computers or in the C-Spec emulator if you don't already have an actual ZX Spectrum Next computer. So you might be wondering, why do we need a development environment for creating basic programs? All we need to do is turn on the computer or turn on the emulator and we can just start typing basic programs, which is true. However, there are some tools that we can use to make the development process um, I don't want to say better necessarily, but different. And I think it never hurts to have some more tools available at our disposal that we can use in our development process. So I'm going to share with you how I set up a development environment for creating next basic programs and some tools that I use to accomplish that. And if you like, you can try it out for yourself. See if it's something that's useful for you. And I'll put these steps in the video description down below in case you just want to read through them instead of watching this whole video. And some of these steps I've already gone through in previous videos where I showed how to set up a development environment for creating Z80 assembly language programs. Although this is for basic, some of the steps are the same. So I'm not actually going to go through and do all of these steps because I think they're pretty self-explanatory by now. Although some of them we will be going through in detail, but some of the more general ones that I've already covered before, I'll just refer you to the previous videos that I've made on those topics, or you can just read the instructions of how to do it. So let's start at the beginning and see what's involved. But before we actually take a look at the individual steps, let's uh, just briefly discuss what it is our goal is in setting up this development environment. So as you know, there are different ways to create uh, basic programs for the ZX Spectrum Next. You can do it on the actual hardware, or you can do it in the C-Spec emulator. This development environment that I'm going to be setting up today actually uses Visual Studio Code Editor on a PC computer, a Windows-based computer. So that will allow us to create our programs on a PC using a regular PC keyboard and of course the nice display that you might have on your computer. And that will allow us to create our programs on a regular PC environment. But once we've created our basic program in the PC environment, it actually gets saved as a text file. And we're going to need to convert that text file into a basic program that we can run in our C-Spec emulator or on the actual ZX Spectrum Next machine, if you like. And then once that basic program has been created, we need a way to put it into the image of the ZX Spectrum Next computer that we're running on the C-Spec emulator. So the emulator can navigate to it in its menu and actually find our basic program and run it. So we're going to be looking at that today as well. And by the time we're done today, we're going to have, I think, a pretty complete development environment set up that allows us to accomplish all these steps. So we'll have really a lot of tools at our disposal for making next basic programs. Now, of course, I'm not an expert in developing programs for the ZX Spectrum Next, and you might have a better environment already set up but hopefully you might find some interesting information in today's video. So I'll just go through it and show you the steps that I did to create my environment. So if we take a look at my first step here, it says create folder structure. Now this is just folders that we're setting up on our computer and they are in this format here. So these are the folders that we want to set up. And so on my computer, I'm setting this up on the C hard drive. So I have the C hard drive indicated here and I set up a folder called next dev and then underneath the next dev folder, I created two more folders, one called SD card and another called project one. And then underneath the project one folder, I created two more folders, one called bin 
and one called source or src so these are the folders that i set up and if you wanted to follow along with me and set up this environment you might want to go ahead and create those folders on your machine now as well and if you're not using the c drive on your computer then you'll need to obviously change that letter to whatever drive letter that you're using and just so you know this src folder is the one where we're going to be saving our programs and also the tools that we're going to be using to process our programs today so once these folders are set up let's check this off here and go down to our next step which is download a spectrum next image file and unzip it to the sd card folder so this is pretty self-explanatory i think i've done this in a previous video but here is the link where you download the spectrum next image file and i'll just open it up and show it to you just so you know exactly what we're doing and here it is here and of course i'll put these links in the video description down below as well and if you go to this page and scroll down here to the part where it says current distro images i selected this image right here next to distribution 2gb sd card image so you just download that image file and then you unzip the contents to the sd card folder right here sd card right there and that image file is going to contain three different files it's going to contain this file here the cspec next dash 2 gb image that we just took a look at as well as it's also going to contain these two files here en next zx.rom and en next mmc.rom so once these two files have been extracted as well we're going to copy these over to the bin folder right here so once those are copied over we can check that off and take a look at our next step here which is download cspec emulator and unzip to bin folder so again we're just going to go to this website right here cspec.org which is right here it looks like this it says the life of a games programmer and then if you scroll down a bit you'll see this link here that says download cspec version 2.15.1 emulator and of course the version number might be different by the time you actually watch this video but if you click on this uh, link here may or may not download the file for you for me i have to download it in an incognito window so i actually have to right click on this link and then say open link in incognito window and then it opens an incognito window on my computer then i click in the browser bar up here just to highlight it and then i click enter or i press enter once and then that downloads the file for me as you can see right down here it's downloaded the file as a zip file this is the cspec emulator we're downloading now and once that's downloaded we'll just go back to the instructions here it says download cspec emulator which is a zip file and unzip to the bin folder so after it's downloaded you can go ahead and unzip the contents of that uh, zip folder into the bin folder up here and we'll go ahead and check that off and now our next step says download and install openal and this is actually a sound driver so i'll just write that here and this is a file that is required to allow the cspec emulator to play sounds and in order to download it you simply go to this link here openal.org downloads which looks like this right here and then i clicked on this link here which says windows installer zip and so that will download a windows installer for this program and once you run it it will install this uh, file for you which is the open al program and as you can see here that zipped folder will contain one file this one right here oalinst.exe so once you extract that file and you can extract it wherever you like just uh, in your downloads folder or wherever you like then it will be here oalinst.exe and you can double click on it to install it and then windows might give you a pop-up message asking you whether you really want to install it so you just allow it to be installed and then it will come up with this license agreement window and you simply click ok and that's it then it, the installation is complete as it shows there in the second pop-up window and that's how you install that and again i covered all this in my 
previous video on installing an assembly language development environment, but we'll just go through it again quickly here, just so we know exactly what we're doing. And again, let's go back to our list here and see where we are. So we've completed this step, download and install OpenAL sound driver. Now at this point, you might want to go ahead and test your C-Spec emulator to make sure it's actually working. And the way you do that, remember we unzip the contents of the C-Spec emulator folder into our bin folder, which should look like this. You can see I have my bin folder right here. So I'm in my C next dev project one bin folder. And since this is where we unzipped all of the C-Spec folders and files, there should be some demo files here that you can test out. But first you might want to just click on the cspec.exe file right here and see if the emulator opens. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And there you can see that my cspec emulator is open, but it's opening just in regular Sinclair Spectrum mode, which is okay, we're gonna fix that later. So, so far the emulator is installed and working. And now I'll close that. And then there are some demos here you could try also if you like. This beast.nex file here, for example, if you double click on that, it should open the emulator again and run this demo of Shadow of the Beast, which has no sound, but it'll test the graphics for us. And once we've done that, if you want to go ahead and test the sound, you can run this file here, which is called modplayer.bat. So I'm going to open it now on my computer, but uh, you may or may not hear the sound when it runs, but it should look like this. And these blue bars will go up and down and there should be sound playing or music playing on your computer while this demo is running. So as long as you see the graphics uh, that we saw in the Shadow of the Beast demo and you see these blue bars jumping up and down and you hear uh, music playing, then everything should be working fine. And you can go ahead and close the C-Spec emulator and we can move on with our next step, which is install VS Code, which is Visual Studio Code. Now this step is kind of optional. You can use actually whatever text editor you want to create our basic programs. You can use Visual Studio Code. You can use a Sublime Text. You can even use Notepad++ or even just regular Windows Notepad if you like. But if you like to install Visual Studio Code, it's very easy to do. You just go to this link here, visualstudio.com slash downloads. And I'll bring it over for us. And it looks just like this and you simply click on this Windows button here and it'll download Visual Studio Code and you just install it very easily. So once Visual Studio Code is installed, it should look something like this. And of course you won't have all these folders on the left. And let's take a look at our next step now. So we've installed Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you like. And now let's take a look at our next step which says install next basic extension for Visual Studio Code. So I'll just go ahead and open Visual Studio Code again here. And over on the left side, if you're not already familiar with Visual Studio Code, there are some uh, icons on the left that allow you to do certain things like explore the different folders and whatnot. And this one here, which is labeled extensions, allows us to install extensions. So now I'm going to look for an extension that's going to give us syntax highlighting for Next Basic programs. And I'm just going to search for Next Basic. Just like that. And you can see there's an extension here that was actually made by Remy Sharp. And a few of the tools we're gonna to be using today were made by Remy Sharp. So I think we should be thankful to him for actually creating these terrific tools for us to use because they're really gonna come in handy as we're gonna see a bit later. But simply if you just click on this next basic extension, you can see mine is already installed and enabled. But if you click on it, you just simply click on the button that says install and make sure it's installed and enabled and then it will give us syntax highlighting. Now let's take a look at our next step. Oh, our next step says install cspect. We did that already up here. We installed the cspect emulator and tested it already. And then I can delete this step because we've already done it. So that's one less step for us to do. And let's go to our next one. So here it says, create a run cspect batch file to start cspec in spectrum next mode. So we already opened the cspec emulator in regular non-next mode, in just regular Sinclair Spectrum mode. But of course we want our cspec emulator to run in 
ZX Spectrum Next mode. And in order to do that, we're going to create a batch file that contains this instruction right here. And I'll put that in the video description as well. So this will open the CSpec emulator in ZX Spectrum Next mode. And so what we want to do is, in order to create a batch file, in case you're not familiar with creating batch files, you simply open a text editor like Windows Notepad, for example, like this right here. And then you can simply copy and paste this line of text here into the notepad. And then you just save it as a file name with a .bat extension, which stands for batch file. So you can see here is my instruction in my notepad. And I'm going to just click File, Save As. And in my instructions here, I said to save it as Run CSpec. So I'm just going to give it a name called Run CSpec, which is right here run cspec.bat and you can save this in the bin folder so i'll just put a note here save in bin folder all right so if we take a look at my bin folder here right here you can see i have my run cspec batch file saved right here so i'll go ahead and run that now i'll double click on it and it should open the cspec emulator this time in zx spectrum next mode. So let's go ahead and try that now. And there we go. We have our CSpec emulator open in ZX Spectrum next mode. So, so far everything is working perfectly. I'll just press escape to get out of this and we can check off this step now. And now let's take a look at our next step. So our next step says download HDF monkey and extract the HDF monkey.exe file to the bin folder. So here's the link to download the HDF Monkey program. And in case you're not familiar with that tool, it's a utility that allows us to copy our program into the ZX Spectrum Next image file. And that way the CSpec emulator will be able to navigate to it when we're using the emulator to try and find our program. So if we go to this link here, uto.specy.org, it should look like this, UTO's 8-bit page, and if we scroll down to the bottom under the section called other stuff, it talks about HDF monkey and it says you can find it here. And there's a clickable link right here that's called here. So you click on that link and it will automatically download the HDF monkey file right here. You can see it's downloaded a zip file. And if we take a look at that zip file, it has one file inside of it called HDF monkey.exe. So if we go back to our instructions, it says download HDF monkey and extract the HDF monkey.exe file to the bin folder. So we just go ahead and extract that into our bin folder and we can check that off now. Now the next point here is not actually an instruction, but more of a note. So some of the tools that we're going to be using are actually created by Remy Sharp, like I mentioned, and he has them shown on his GitHub page, which is right here. So you might want to click on this page and then we can take a look at Remy's uh, GitHub where he has some tools that we're going to be using a bit later. And just to give you a bit of a hint of what's coming up, we're going to be using these two utilities that he's made. One is called text to bass and one is called bass to text. So what are these tools going to do? Well, when we create our basic program, we're going to be creating it first of all as a text file. And then we need to convert that text file into a basic program that we can run on our emulator. So that is why we're going to be using this text to BAS tool. And then the other tool here is BAS to text, which is basic to text. And so this is useful if you've created a basic program or you've modified an existing basic program that you've made uh, using our utilities here. And then you've saved this basic program, but now you want to maybe export it as a text file for some reason, maybe to continue editing it in our Visual Studio Code editor or some other editor, then this basic to text tool will allow us to do that. And we'll take a look at that a bit later as well. So we'll just move this back. And so we'll check this off and you can go ahead and go to this page and read about the tools that we'll be using if you like. But the next thing we want to do is this one here, which says install node. And I know there are a lot of steps to this, uh, development environment setup procedure. And it's up to you really if you 
want to make use of all the different tools that we're going to be installing. But like I said at the beginning of the video, at least we're going to have these tools at our disposal and we can use them if we need to, right? So let's go ahead and see what this next instruction tells us to do. It says install node. And this is actually from Remy's website as well. If you take a look here, it says installation node and NPM included with node are required to install and run the code. So I don't know what node is. I don't know what it does. So all I did was just click on this link here that's called node. And if you do that, it brings you to this page here where you can click on this version here, which is the one I used that says recommended for most users right here. And if you click on that, then it will download this uh, node utility. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll click on that. And then it opens this pop-up window that guides you through the installation process. And now it's done. So I'll click finish and I'll move this back and take a look at our instructions again. So we've installed node now, so we can check that off. And the next step says NPM install. And this again is from Remy's website here. Under the installation section, it says node and NPM are required to install and run the code. And down here, it gives you the instructions for installing this NPM, whatever that is. And here is the instruction line right here. And I'll put that in the video description as well. So this one, I just run from a command window. So I open a command prompt window with, if you're not familiar with opening a command prompt window, you just type CMD in the search bar in your Windows desktop, and it'll give you a command window option. And then when you open it, you'll get a black screen like this, which is the command prompt. So then we're simply going to copy and paste this line here into the command window. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it into this window and I'll press enter and we'll see what happens. And that's it. So you can see it runs some instructions. I'm not sure what it's doing. So it seemed to work fine. And that's all we need to do with that. So I'll close these and we can check off this step for NPM install. And now we'll move on to our next step where we're actually going to be doing stuff now that is close to actually creating a program. So we're getting closer, just hang in there and we'll get there pretty soon. So the next step is create text to basic batch file and save it in the source folder or SRC folder. So what this is going to do, if you wanted to, you could actually follow the instructions on Remy's website, which is right here, command line usage, which explains what the instructions you need to enter in this window here, this command window, in order to run this these two tools, this text to basic tool and this basic to text tool. These are tools that you would run in this command prompt window, but you don't actually need to run it in a command prompt window if you have a batch file. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a batch file and I'm simply going to copy these instructions into again, a Windows notepad and save it with the .bat extension. Or if you prefer to run these instructions from within a command prompt window, you can do that as well. And this here shows you the format for how you would enter those instructions. And if you look down on the page a bit further, it even shows you the command line options if you're interested to make any changes and add some more options to the uh, instructions for executing these tools. So I've already created these batch files and let's go back to our instructions and you can see what those files contain. So here I created a file called text to basic. And the reason I didn't use the same file name txt to bas is because Remy's tool already uses that name. So my batch file needs to have a different name. Otherwise the computer won't know how to run two programs with the same name. So I created a batch file called text to basic and I saved it in the source folder. And this is what you want to put in your batch file. You just copy and paste this text here and put it in your batch file. And similarly for this next step, basic to text, you create another batch file called basic to text and you copy and paste this text into that file. And then you have your two batch files created just like that. And we're going to run those a bit later. So let's take a look at our next step now that says create a my project basic program with line numbers. 
and save as a .txt file in the source folder. So what that means is we're going to go ahead and go to our text editor and create a basic program called my project. So let me open my VS Code editor here. And now I'm just going to select file, new file. And here, if you've already installed the next basic extension, you could, if you wanted to click on this select a language option right here, and then you could type in next and select next basic right here. And then the editor will know that we're typing in a next basic program. So then we can start typing a program. Let's do a very simple one. We'll just enter line 100, print, hello there, just like that. And we want to save this, remember, as a text file called my project. So I'm going to click file, save as, and I'm going to save it in the source folder, remember, or SRC folder, which is where I am now. I'm in C, next dev, project one, and then SRC. So I'm going to save it as my project.txt. So my project.txt, and I'll go ahead and click save. And now we have our basic program saved as a text file. So let's take a look at our next step now. And we can check off this one now that we have our my project basic demo program created. And our next step here says, run text to bass batch file. Actually, this should be called text to bass, T-E-X-T -E to basic. Because remember, we can't use the same name as Remy's tool. So I had to rename it as text to basic. So now we need to actually run that file and convert our text file into an actual basic program file. So now we've created our text to basic batch file and we've saved it in the source folder. So let's go ahead and execute that now. And you can either execute it from the command line or you can execute it from Windows. So let's try it both ways. So in Windows, so here I am in my next dev folder and my project one folder and my source folder or SRC folder underneath that. And here we have our myproject.txt file that we just saved using our Visual Studio Code editor. And now we want to actually convert that myproject.txt file into a myproject.bas file. So all we need to do to do that is execute this text to basic.bat file by double clicking on it. So I'll do that now. And there you can see we now have a myproject.bas file right here. And this is our basic program file now that we can either open it in our CSpec emulator, which we'll do in a moment, or we could even copy this file onto an SD card and plug that SD card into an actual ZX Spectrum Next computer and run it that way by navigating to it through the menu system in the ZX Spectrum Next. But we're going to execute it in the CSpec emulator in just a moment. But first I wanna show you the other way we could run a batch file by using a command prompt. So I'm just gonna go back to my command window, which is right here. And if you're not familiar with DOS commands and you're not familiar with how to use a command window, don't worry about it. You don't actually need to do it this way. I'm just including this step for completeness for people who might be interested in doing it this way. So I'm just going to enter some DOS commands to navigate to the source folder. So CD backslash brings me to the top level, then CD next dev brings me to my next dev folder and DIR will show me the directory contents right there. And so now I want to go to my project one folder by typing CD project one and enter. I'll just zoom in a bit here so we can see what's going on. And now I want to go to my source folder, remember? So if I do a DIR, you can see here, I've got my bin folder right here and I should have a source folder as well, right here, SRC. So I want to go into that folder, so I'll just enter CD, SRC. So here I am in my source folder or SRC folder, which is under the next dev folder, then under the project one folder. And you can see here are the tools and our files that we saved from before. And if we wanted to execute a file from here, for example, if we want to execute this tool here, basic to text, where we can create a text file 
from a basic program, let's go ahead and give that a try. But of course, we already have a myproject.txt file right here. So I'll go ahead and delete that. All right. So now we no longer have our myproject.txt file. And if we execute this basic to text.bat file, that should recreate it for us. So let's go ahead and try that now. I'll just type in basic to text and press enter. And now we should have our text file recreated. Let's check it out by typing dir dir. And there we have our myproject.txt file back restored. All right, now let's go back to our list of instructions here and see what's next. So we've done this one, run text to basic batch file to create the basic file. And that's the basic program we can either load onto an SD card and put in the next computer, or we can run it through the CSpec emulator, which we're going to be doing right now. But before we do that, remember we need to insert that basic program into the ROM image of the ZX Spectrum next image file that the CSpec emulator is going to use. Otherwise, the CSpec emulator won't be able to find our basic program in its menu system. So we need to complete this next step first, which is create a monkey batch file. Now that's just the name that I gave it to use HDF monkey to copy the .bas file to the Spectrum Next ROM image and open the CSpec emulator. Save monkey.bat in the source folder. So what we're going to do now is create another batch file. And all you do to do that is simply copy this text here and you might need to modify it based on your computer if you're using a different drive letter or if you've set up different folder names and so forth. But what this is going to do is it's going to find this HDF monkey utility here and it's going to use this instruction put to put a file into the ROM image. And here we just specify which file we want to use. So here there's a path that specifies the image file that we downloaded, which is this next two gigabyte image, remember? And here at the end is the name of my project.bas basic file that I want to inject into that ROM image. So if we copy and paste this instruction into a notepad again and save it as monkey.bat, it should automatically inject that image into the ROM file for us. And actually there's a note here that says, and open the CSpec emulator. So this step actually is not going to open the CSpec emulator. If you like, you can have this batch file open the CSpec emulator for you automatically as well, but uh, it doesn't actually open the CSpec emulator with this instruction that I've included here. So I'm just going to erase this for now because it's not going to actually open the CSpec emulator. And here you can see I have a notepad window with the instructions pasted into it right here. And now if I save it as file, save as monkey.bat right here, and I'm going to save it under my next dev project one SRC folder. And then I'll click save now, and I should have this monkey.bat file. And now, why don't we go ahead and test this out? So let's just do a quick summary now. Remember in our Visual Studio Code editor, we entered a simple basic program, but we actually saved it not as a basic program, but as a text file. So this is actually called myproject.txt, remember? And then we executed this text to basic tool in order to create a basic program out of our text file. And now we want to insert that basic program into our ZX Spectrum Next ROM image for the CSpec emulator to use. And now we have our monkey.bat batch file that should do exactly that. So first I wanna go ahead and open our CSpec emulator again by just going back here to my bin folder where we saved the CSpec emulator. And remember we have this run CSpec batch file that we created right here, run CSpec. So let me go ahead and open that now. And there we go, we have our CSpec emulator open. And now I'm just going to press the space bar. And now we're using our emulator just as we would a normal ZX Spectrum Next computer. So I'm going to select the browser option here. And you can see here is the menu for the ZX Spectrum Next emulator. And there is no file here that's called myproject.bas, right? That's the file we want to put into this 
image so we can actually navigate to it in our CSpec emulator. So I'm just going to exit from this emulator now and I'll go back to my source folder right here. All right, so here we are in the source folder and here is my monkey.bat batch file, which should put our basic program called myproject.bas into the image file that our emulator can find. So let's go ahead and double click on this batch file and see what happens. So that was very quick. It didn't give us any messages or anything, but now our basic program should be in the image file that the CSpec emulator should be able to navigate to in the menu. So there we have our CSpec emulator on the screen again. So I'll press the space bar and I'll select browser. And there, you can see down at the bottom here, we have our basic program file ready to go. So let's go ahead and open it. And well, it actually runs it when I open it. I'm not sure why, but uh, there is our basic program. 100 print hello there, and I can run it. And there you go. So now we have our basic program that has been converted from a text file and then injected into the ROM file for the ZX Spectrum Next. And the CSpec emulator can now navigate to that file and open it, and we can modify it and run it and save it. And if you were to create a basic program on an actual ZX Spectrum Next computer, and save it onto the SD card. You could use that basic to text utility and convert it to a text file if you like. And so now we have several tools at our disposal where we can use text files, convert them to basic files, run them in an emulator, run them on the actual ZX Spectrum Next hardware, and we can convert back and forth between text files and basic files. And so I think this will make it easier for us to do basic development particularly if you want to create your basic programs as a text file first and then convert them into a basic program without having to actually type them either in the emulator or on the ZX Spectrum Next. All right, so there we go. Hopefully this video has been informative and useful and enjoyable to watch. And I think it's always useful to have more tools that we can use. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.